I'm your host, Derek Asante, and today we are spending some time with a new friend of mine. Uh, we just got acquainted, and it's been awesome. This woman has not only accomplished so much professionally, but she continues to share her gifts with the world through her music and her acting and other things that she does. And today I'm, I'm excited to actually learn a lot more about what she has to offer that I didn't even know. And so it's going to be an exciting uh, conversation that I'm looking forward to. She recently released her latest single, Fresh Start, featuring Shaw Claire from her, you know, up and coming project. So I'm excited to learn more about that and how that came to be. And I'm sure you're going to be excited as well. Please help me welcome the one and only Shauna. Welcome. How are you? Wait, I think I just lost you with the audio. Um, but there yeah, we, we are. <laughs> <laughs> that I lost you there for a second. I know, me too. Like, it's frozen. I'm like, okay, that's okay though. No worries, yeah. no worries. Yeah. Uh, yeah, all good, all good. Oh, so welcome. This is Dap Show, and I'm glad to have you here. And so what I usually do is I open with a quote. Every show mm. that I do, I open with a quote, and then I want you to share with me what comes to mind when you hear this quote. Okay. All right? Yeah. So the quote I have for you is this. It's by um, Errol Ozan, and it reads, some beautiful paths cannot be discovered without getting lost. What comes to mind when you hear that? Mm, wow. Um, I think we all sort of have a plan in life about what we want to do, and we have it kind of written out, you know, like this is what I'm going to do when I'm 20, and this when I'm 25, and and it's kind of this playbook that we try to follow. Yeah. And really what ends up happening is all of that stuff that we plan on doing. It just doesn't end up happening that way. But what ends up happening is that we get veered off our path and we find something even more interesting and more magical. Nice. Um, and sort of that's the whole magic of it. It's like you don't know what's going to happen next and, and what's supposed to happen will happen. Um, and I feel like that's how you and I met Yes, uh, with us sort of veering off our normal paths and bumping into each other and discovering that we both like the same things. Right. So um, <laughs> that's how I would take that quote for sure. That's awesome. um, so always follow, always follow the path um, sort of less traveled. Like you don't have to go by the book. Right. It's not going to happen by the book anyway. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. Life happens. Yeah. <laughs> that's a good quote, by the way. Thank Very you. Good. Thank you. Yeah. Love that. Love that. Right. So I usually like to start with a little bit of a backstory so that listeners who tune into this episode can kind of have an idea who Shauna is and, and learn a little bit more about you. And then we make our way to the present time. Right. Mm, definitely. Right. So let's start with way back when. If you can tell me a little bit about your family and how many siblings uh, did you have, if any, and, and how was that like? Yeah, um, I grew up in a small town back in Nova Scotia, the east coast of Canada. It's called Wolfville. A uh, very small, quaint town. Kind of like a Hallmark movie, that kind of town. Okay. <laughs> um, and I am the oldest sister of two. So I have a younger sister who is seven years younger than me. Her name's Natalia. Okay. Uh, and basically, I grew up in that small town and I had a good experience there because there wasn't a whole lot to do. Yeah. So in a way you had to make your own fun. So it made me a very creative person. Nice. Um, and I think that's something that's stuck with me all these years since, since back there. Um, just always trying to find my own entertainment and create things all the time. And that's kind of where I get, I think a lot of my creativity from. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. So is it wolf? How do you pronounce it? Yeah, wolf as in like, ow, like wolf. <laughs> <laughs> I always love doing that. Blast me. <laughs> I have to do it. It's oh part of gosh. it. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. And, uh, yeah, and, you know, we would say it so fast back there that it would almost sound like waffle because we'd say it so fast. They'd wow. be like, where are you from? And we'd say, I'm from Waffle. And it would be so fast wow. that it would sound like waffle. <laughs> um, but, yeah, that's, that's where I'm from originally. So yeah. how many... I mean, I just want to get an idea. So what were like maybe one or two things that you used to do as a child that was, you know, fun things to do? Because you said it was a small town. I'm, I'm just curious. I'm trying to put myself in that situation. Yeah. Well, you know, a lot of outdoor activities, a okay. lot of tobogganing, things like that. But then when you get into the older years, you, you tend to do things a bit differently. Like say you, you go to a park and you like wade in the, 
in the pond there that you're not supposed to wade in oh. or you know you you find sort of like these um like beaches that are hidden or or or, or um you know uh lakes or i should say lakes not right. beaches, but lakes yeah. that are hidden behind the you know uh, the forest or things like that and that's kind of what we did to make our fun we had to be creative and we had to you know do things that were out of the box for sure to, to it, make that happen yeah it's funny i find that when as children when we have less we are extremely creative but we, yeah. when we have too much it strips us of that creativity you know what I mean? Like the imagination kind of gets lost because everything is available to us, you know? I completely so get you. And yeah. I, even nowadays, like with my daughter, I have a daughter who that's how we met through, through yeah. seeing each other at school with our children. And she's eight years old. And sometimes I see all the toys that she has and she has so many toys. Okay. Uh, speaking of my daughter, she just popped her head in there for a second. Okay. Um, but yeah, she has so many toys. And sometimes I go, no, this is too much. Yeah. Let's, bring it back a little bit that's right let's let's kind of try to deal with fewer things and i find the kids are way happier that way when yeah. they have less things to yeah. do yeah uh because then they'll focus on what they have instead of going oh should i do this or this or right. trying to figure it out right right um and so yeah i mean i'm i'm proud of that because i always try to find the fun in whatever i'm doing even if it means i have nothing i i have just my hands to work with or or, or a pencil and paper or yeah. my imagination you know um that's right and so that's something I take with me forever. And I love that I have. And so what would you say in contrast, like relating to your daughter's situation, modern day now with all the toys that are available to them in compared to what you had, what were some of the benefits of being raised the way that you were raised? Would you say? Mm. Well, you know, I still remember one Christmas where I got, I think it was exercise Barbie and Ken or something like that. And I had like maybe a handful of Barbies, like three or four or five of them. And nowadays there's like <laughs> every single Barbie you could think of. Like you, you, I, I've never heard of some of these. Like I, what is this? Like toboggan Barbie and like it's all these things. And, um, but I, I remember getting so excited yeah. just by looking at those few Barbies that I had and the feeling that I got from having just those things. Yeah. And I find now when there's so many of them, it kind of loses the the feel, you know, it loses yeah. the excitement behind it all. Yeah. Um, and I, and for me, I'm happy about that because it forced me to kind of go into my imagination and go, okay, now Barbie's in somewhere. She's in a different place. Like there wasn't mm. the big Barbie house, the same they have now. Um, right. So you have to really use your imagination to make things yeah. pretend that those things were really, you know, what they were. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so that kind of, really made me have a big imagination i'm really really proud of that nice would yeah. you would you yeah. change anything about the way you were raised um no you know what i wouldn't nice. i wouldn't because i feel that it shaped every single part of who i am um i don't think i would be uh an artist probably if i didn't grow up in the environment i did or mm. i i mean i may not have it, it's hard to say um yeah. But no, I wouldn't change any of it. I have so many amazing stories from back there that a lot of people can't relate to because they they grew up a different way. Yeah. But for me, those experiences will be something I carry with me forever. Yeah. Um, and there, there were some of the best times in my life. Were, were you always into the arts when you were younger? Um, yeah, I was. I was always into the arts. Um, starting very young, I started singing. Um, I was probably about four or five years old when I started singing in front of my grandparents. No way. Room. And I would have a banana in my hand. <laughs> That's and a mic. I would mic? be on stage <laughs> as my mic, yeah. And I would be singing to like Debbie Gibson wow. uh, or Tiffany. And I was the star of the show and everyone had to watch. And it was a very important thing. So I would do that all the time. And even at that age, I said, this is what I want to do with my life. Like, I want to wow. do this at that age. Um, wow. And so that's where it all started for me. And I would continue singing and singing for my grandparents, of course, which was great. But I would start doing shows and performing in front of people a year or two after that, um, you know, in front of audiences and started writing songs. And and it sort of became everything for me. So it really did. 
Sorry, were they were they supportive? Like your parents, your grandparents, were they extremely supportive? Or were they just kind of looking at you like, oh, you're just a kid and this is fun to do? And as you were getting older, did they still feel the way, you know, that they felt when you first started at five? Or did they look at it and say, well, you need to start thinking about a job and, and school and things like that? What, what happened there? How was that process? Well, my grandparents and, and my parents when I was younger were very supportive of me, actually. My mother was a singer. Oh, uh, and my dad was also a singer as well, too. They both were in bands in high school. Uh, my mom had one band. It was called The Ladybugs. They had this song that they would do. It was so awesome. I forget how it goes. It goes, um, I'll be your ladybug. Yeah, yeah. I'll be your lady. Yeah, yeah. I'll be your ladybug. Yeah, yeah. Come fly with me. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And my mom would <laughs> sing that to me all the time. And my dad had a band too. And I would always uh, find books of his of writing. Like he would write songs and oh. poetry and things like that. But they never really told me that until later right. in my life when I was starting to inquire. But I did know that my mom was a singer because I would always see her singing. She continued to sing into her later years of life. Wow. Um, she was a nurse at the nursing home and she would, they would sing at different nursing homes together, her and a couple of her friends. Um, and yeah, they were, they were very supportive of me. They always said, you're amazing. Yes, you should definitely keep singing. They put me into singing lessons and, and all of that. But of course, you know, as you get older, you know, people kind of are a little bit more skeptical and they're like, yeah. well, is that really gonna be right. something you can do with your life? Is right. this realistic? Blah, blah, blah. But one thing I will tell you is this. My parents always said to me that I could be a singer as a career. Wow. They never ever judged me or said, you know, maybe you should try to think of doing something else. Or they knew that there was no other choice. It was like all or nothing for me. Right. Um, and even if I was doing something else, I would always make music a part of it, right. even in school. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like if I had a math project, I would, I would write a song about math. Um, or English or science or whatever it was, it would always end up being a play or a musical or a song or right. I always made it into something that, that made sense for me. Right. Um, so yeah, I mean, I did that all through growing up. I, I was uh, acting and singing and musicals and theater and, and singing in bands all my life. Um, and then I ended up going to AMDA actually after high school, I auditioned for it. It's in New York. It's called the American Musical Dramatic Academy. Okay. Um, and I was one of two, actually, that got accepted from Canada. Wow. And I got a full scholarship uh, from my audition. And so I went to New York. And so everyone knew that this is what I wanted to do. It was kind of like there was no other options. You know, like I was not going to take no for an answer. Hold, um, hold on, yeah. hold on, hold on. Hold yeah. On. I, yeah. That's a lot. Hold on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. Okay, so... High school, finishing high school is when you ended up at this this up with this uh, scholarship opportunity. Am I correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. So, what were you doing up until that opportunity presented itself? What kind mm -hmm. of things were you doing? Training? Um, were there auditions? Were there opportunities to feature with somebody or work with somebody? Like, did something happen before that opportunity came and you said, "You know what? I'm ready to give this a shot." Right. Um. Well, I was in music festivals actually growing up in competitions okay. uh, in our hometown. And so I would be doing that all the time. Uh, mm -hmm. I had a music teacher that his name was Ross Thompson and he trained me and I would go in these competitions. And so I would win quite a, a lot of them. I would, you know, get first place or, um, and I would do like musicals or uh, more classical type stuff. Okay. And then of course I would go and I would perform in a band, you know, at, at, you know, on the weekends. So I was kind of doing all of those things hmm. and I'm losing track of what the question was. Sorry. <laughs> no, 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 no worries. No worries. No, cause I'm trying I'm to figure out. out, I'm trying to figure out how did you know, or how did you even get the opportunity to jump on this? Because usually you need to have like a body of work. Right. And I think you were mm. just explaining that you did all these festivals mm -hmm. Were they documented? Like, did you always have someone filming it and so that you can kind of use it as a part of your um, material um, to kind of share? Or? Yeah, I mean, I have all the awards that I keep in, in the gamut of things. And, you know, just doing all those things growing up, being in musicals and, and singing in those festivals and stuff, and that prepared me for the audition. And mm. the thing is, I always wanted to do pop music, but 
I was doing it on the side in bands, but I wasn't really recording anything or putting anything out. But that was always at the back of my head going, this is what I want to be doing. Mm. And I thought, well, musical theater in at AMDA in New York would be a perfect place for me to go for school because at least I know I'm continuing to sing and dance and act and I'll be in New York. So, I mean, who knows who I could meet there? Um, so that kind of set me up for that. When I was coming back from New York uh, on break from the school I was going to, mm -hmm. I would sing some of my songs that I wrote on my guitar because I had, had learned how to play. And I was singing them at coffee houses and things like that. And this friend of mine had heard me and he reached out to me and he said, listen, I'm in Montreal and I'm taking um, engineering, music engineering uh, in Montreal. And I really would like to record you your songs and, and some of the stuff you've been writing. And I was like, yeah, that, that would be a great idea. That's amazing. That's exactly what I'd love to do. Nice. So I ended up going from AMDA to Montreal. And then we started recording this demo mm -hmm. and one of his friends came in and ha had heard about three or four of the songs and his friend had just started his own label. Okay. And so he, he liked it and he offered me a contract actually, after hearing my songs. That's it right there. Your first one. I know. So that was the breaking point right there. Like not the breaking point, like in a, in a, in a good way. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like yeah. the breakthrough. I should yeah. Say. Um, that was the breakthrough. And so at 19, 18, 19, I was offered my first recording contract. Wow. Of course, I had I didn't know anything about the legal part. Right. But I ended up signing it and I did my first album, which was called Deluge. Um, why, why that and, title? Sorry, why that title? Yeah, you know, I had all of these these issues and things that had been building up okay. um, throughout my life that I felt like I just needed to release all at the same time. It was just like a deluge of water, like like it was like a flood of all these things that I was feeling, and so that's why I ended up calling the album Deluge because it was just it was so many things coming out that I needed to get out um yeah so that's where that started but uh, but then of course some bad things happened with that label and it didn't quite go as well as i was expecting mm -hmm. um it was very good in a lot of ways though i did a music video i shot it at casa loma my first music video was shot at casa loma wow um, and it was aired on much music went back when we had much music um and they had like the indie spotlight and all that it was wow. on there wait was it like um, mass master p era yeah yeah wow. like master P. Era. like really, i'm talking <laughs> like that era yes like um and so i was on there i did some interviews uh you know we started start things started going really well with that um but then unfortunately things didn't work out with the label there's a lot of shady dealings yeah. and i learned a lot about the legal side of mm. things just about the business yeah um, now looking back i look at it in a very positive way because it was an, a learning experience yeah. for me yeah um but then I came to Toronto and I was like, I, I want to go this alone. Like I have to keep doing this and I don't have a budget now and I don't know where I'm going or what I'm doing. But I said, I'm going to keep going. This is what I'm supposed to be doing. Yeah. I know this in my heart. Um, so I came here to Toronto and I started doing acting and modeling gigs on the side to make money as I was doing songs. And I got ripped off a lot from a lot of people. Wow. A lot of producers ripped me off and promised me things. And I went through a lot of that. Wow. Um, but then eventually I found these people that were in Florida, actually. And then I got right, I got back up on, on the horse again, yeah. like really seriously. And then it started to take off again. So yeah. when you left that school mm. and you went to Montreal, did you end up going back or that was it? Because the deal happened, and so you figured, that's it? I don't need to go back and finish the school? Or what was that process? Yeah. I mean, th that school was only for a few years. And so I had okay. gone for about a year. And then I realized, like, I don't really want to do musical theater as a career. I just didn't know where to go yeah. after high school. I mean, I love musical theater. And I would still do it. Mm -hmm. But really, what I wanted, and I knew in the back of my head what it was, is I want to do pop. I want to be a radio yeah. singer. Yeah. I want to sing. I, I want. That's what I want. Yeah. And yeah. so I didn't really feel like I needed to go back because I thought, I'll come back here. But when I come back, I want to come back as a pop star. Right. You know, I want to come back to New York as a pop star. 
Um, and so that's what I ended up doing. And, and it was a bit, a bit risky, but, um, but I feel like it was the right choice at the time. So, yeah. yeah. So now, so you got to do that. You ended up at Florida. What, yes. What happened with Florida? What, what, was that a deal opportunity or was it just an opportunity to kind of mingle and meet with different industry folks and, and build uh, relationships there? Yeah. Well, there was a big break between me having my deal and then meeting the people in Florida. I mean, there were quite a few years there where I was struggling. I was paying money out of pocket to go into studios. People were ripping me off. People were had not good intentions for me. Um, you name it. I've yeah. been through it all. But finally, when I found the people in Florida, it was a good fit. And so that, I, I can't even remember how many years it was between, but I always had it in the back of my head, like, I'm doing this. This yeah. is happening, yeah. even yeah. though I'm doing other things. Yeah. And everything kind of came back to that, wow. right? Um, so, yeah. So in Florida, I had just met them here in Ontario. Yeah. And they connected me to the people that were in Florida, and I also took a really huge risk for Florida, too. Yeah, because, because you're here to... and then you just went out there because yeah. the folks in Toronto connected you. And I hadn't you. known them. I hadn't, I didn't know them very well. You know, I was flying out to Florida to work with these people. Wow. You know, it was, I just, it was a bit of a ballsy move so, for me. But... but, okay, so talk to me about that because the feeling that you had to have endured just thinking about i'm just thinking about you how old were you by the way around that time going over there in your 20s yeah yeah right let's say 20s late 20s yeah something like that we don't have to say that. right so now, now <laughs> but, but you're uprooting to go to a completely different country different you know different place to yeah. meet people you don't know yes describe yes. the fear or the anxiety or the nerves that was going through there just i think that's important right. for people to recognize that sometimes because i did an episode in the past where i was talking about risk right sometimes mm -hmm. we have to take the risk in order to reap the rewards we can't just stay put mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and so I'm, yeah. I'm just curious how you felt making that decision and going through with it well i ended up working with them in florida but i didn't move, i didn't relocate to florida i no, just not to stay but i mean that trip I'm just talking yes, about the trip. But itself. I went there and I, I had to save up quite a bit of money to get there. They weren't paying my way. It was me meeting up with them because I had really um, uh, felt so great about what I had heard that they'd done. And I really wanted to work with them. And so it was just me taking a risk on myself. Yeah. Uh, and I was a little scared because I didn't know whether or not it was going to work out. Mm -hmm. I had been through so many terrible experiences here where yeah. I had paid producers to do things for me and they just like didn't even like forgot all about me, didn't even wow. give me my stuff half the time, you know, charged me way too much. Right. I mean, there's just, there's a lot of things that happen. Yeah. They try to, they try to convince you it's good when it's not, you know, right. just like right. so many things. Right. Right. And so I had been through all of that. Wow. And I thought, okay, well, I'm going to do this. Um, I had even gotten an extra job and I was selling I don't know, newspaper subscriptions or something like that. Uh, and I, I, I sold so many subscriptions in one weekend to be able to go on this trip. I think I made $12,000 in one weekend selling what? subscriptions. <laughs> yeah. Like I was like, I was calling out to people. It was like a big party. Um, they were giving away MP3 players with oh, the subscriptions. Yes. So yeah. I was like, MP3 players, like screaming, like <laughs> everybody, I, all these people were coming around this big crowd. Like I made it into this big, like fiasco. Wow. And I finally ended up making it happen and, and getting the funds to be able to go on this trip and to be able to do it. And so I went and it ended up being a really great experience for me. And I got some amazing tracks out of it. Wow. Um, but unfortunately, one of the producers ended up passing away that year oh, a little no. later. Um, you know, God rest his soul. But but I still have that experience of, of working with them, you know, and uh, it gave me that feeling that I can do this and I will make this happen. And I believe in myself and I will keep doing this until wow. something happens. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so. That's awesome. That's I, mm -hmm. and I, it's funny. I talk about it a lot. Where I tell people all the time, take the risk because you don't know what would happen if you didn't. Right? 
You don't, mm. you can't, there's nothing promised. There's nothing's guaranteed, but the work that you put in, you'll get the results of that work, right? Mm-hmm. So a lot of people don't want to take the risk. They get comfortable in that comfort zone and they get stuck there. And so I think yes. that's, that's a great story to share there because I think it's important for people to recognize we have to step out of our comfort zones in order to see the differences or even different parts of ourselves that we didn't know was there, right? For you to take yeah. that leap to go out there and say, I'm going to take this chance. I don't know these people. I'm going to leave my country just to go and give this a shot and see how it works. And if it doesn't, I come back. But the experience is still something I would never have gained, right? So I think that's, a, that's, a, that's a powerful story. Thank you for sharing that one. That's awesome. No problem. No problem. <laughs> now, how, how did acting come into play? Mm. Well, you know, I've always had the acting bug. It's been kind of a thing I've had, even with the singing. I feel like they go hand in hand. Mm. You know, you really have to tell a story and create create a character and, and portray emotions when you're singing a song or writing a song. And I also knew at a very young age that I wanted to be an actor. Oh. Um, I used to play dead on the floor for my parents all the time. <laughs> <And> I, would, <laughs> I would try to make them believe me. Like I would just, it would, everything was just about acting and singing for me all growing up. Um, wow. I've even, I even had people at a young age tell me that I should be an actor. Nice. Um, and that gave me a lot of confidence yeah. and support. Nice. Um, I started out in theater though. So I, I was doing stage work and musical theater and and things like that. And it wasn't until I came to Toronto that I really decided that I wanted to get into film. It's such a different kind of art than than, uh, the stage. So, sorry, when you say coming to Toronto, you're talking about coming from uh, Wolfo. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, when I was in Nova Scotia, I didn't really do any kind of film work. Mm. There wasn't really anything there happening. Right. It was more stage work that I was doing. So mm. I was taking, uh, you know, theater from different teachers there, doing uh, stage performances and all of that nice. growing up. Nice. But I, I also really loved film and I wanted to get into that. That's what I deep down wanted to do. And so when I came to Toronto, I started auditioning for things here. Um, and I did modeling as well and they, they went hand in hand. So I would do some modeling shoots and then that would get me into a different crowd of people that would introduce me to the acting. And so all those things were combined. Um, yeah. And I did quite a few really great films here in Toronto as well that I'm very proud of. Can you share some of them? Of course I can. Yeah. There's one actually that's out on Tubi right now. Um, yeah, it's called Heinous Acts. It's a horror film. And I'm actually in, there's three sections. I'm in the distortion section of the film. I think it's about the third story in. Okay. And I play the wife, the ghost wife that comes back to haunt my husband. <laughs> who basically killed me and our, and our daughter. Wow. And I come back to haunt him with his, him and his new girlfriend. Wow. Um, yeah, so I did that quite a few years back. Nice. And it's now airing on Tubi. So if you want to check it out. I will. I will. Oh, my gosh. Out. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, what's another one I've done? Well, they were doing, uh, let's try to think what the, there's a film called Rupture. I don't know if you've heard of that film Rupture. before. I've heard a name. Yeah. It was filmed back in 2015 at Cineplex um, at the studios here. Okay. And it aired 2016, I believe. Wow, so sure. in that one, I got my own trailer and I got to be the double for one of the main actresses. And I got prosthetics done to my face. Uh, what? And, yeah. <laughs> and it was for about two hours. I had prosthetics and my face was like, I'm talking to bro. Wow. Like, so scary. <laughs> um, and I had my own. And I'm trying to think of the name of the actress. I wrote it down here. Where is it? Um, her name's Carrie Bichet. Wow. Uh, and so I basically played the double the body yeah. double of her yeah and so when it when she she transforms into the kind of scary creature the scary creature is me it, okay um, so that yeah. was a lot of fun that was a, a smaller role but it was a bigger bigger kind of deal yeah, yeah. um also i did a, a film called grim which was uh filmed here and another one called a gun in a ring which is actually a tamil film 
that was filmed here as well. So there's quite a lot of them that I've done over the years. Wow. Those are some of the notable ones. Nice. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, so. You, you find that you're, I'm trying to now compare the two worlds, right? The, the singing <laughs> and the music side and the acting side. Where, which one of these brings you the most joy when you're on set or when you're in that space? really tough i know it's tough that's why i'm asking because i'm oh curious this is the way you're describing um, it i'm like there's no way <laughs> one could be you know well okay what i will say is this shooting a music video is probably my ultimate best because i'm mixing both worlds together at the same time yes yes because i'm acting and i'm singing and that's it's right. all there that's right that's i would right. say that's probably my favorite but there's just so much good about it it's just i love every part of it nice Nice. Every part, every part, yeah. Man. Wow. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. <clears throat> what about the acting that keeps you still doing it, and what about the singing that keeps you still wanting to do what you're doing? Mm -hmm. Well, with acting, there's never really an end to it because you're always playing something, somebody else. You're playing a different character, and so you have to learn something new about this character. It, there's always something new. You're never bored because this character yeah. is always going to have something that's a little different from you right. or an experience that you haven't been through before. And so it's, it, it's always going to be different. There's always something new. Yeah. And yeah. with the singing and, and stuff too, I mean, that never ends either because what I write comes from my life experiences and comes from things that happened to me. And so my life keeps moving Mm. And I keep experiencing new things and new phases of my life, which of course bring new songs. Right. Um, and so I really feel like that's never really going to end either. Uh, um, and you're always getting better. Yeah. As you go, as you go, like every song you write, it's better than the last one. You know, you, you know a bit more now about writing a song than you did the first time around. And it's kind of the same with acting too. So tell me about the, the songwriting process, because I, mm -hmm. I assume it can be stressful sometimes if you're hitting that, what we call the writer's block, right? Mm -hmm. And so where do you tap in to get your, you know, songs written? And is it always from personal experiences or do you sometimes reach out through vicarious experiences, other people's stories, and you kind of take that and create a song? Like, how does that work for you? Mm -hmm. Do you need to well, be inspired? I've found what's worked for me the best mm -hmm. is is taking from my experience personally um i feel like that is the easiest way because it's, i have all these emotions that i want to share right and it really just comes out naturally yeah. um i have written from a different perspective like i have a song that i'm writing right now and it's about this man who basically stands on the bridge back in Nova Scotia and everyone waves to him. Um, and so I'm writing a song about him kind of from me looking in at him, you know? Got it. Uh, so that's, that's a different one, but, but for me, it's always something that's happened. You know, yeah. I don't just come up with an idea that's sort of uh, out of my realm of reality, really. Right. Right. Yeah. So usually it's something that's been happening to me. Yeah. Usually. And what would, what would you say some of the benefits are for you when, you know, let's say you're on a set of, of a movie or film and you're playing this character. When you come home, are you able to separate yourself from that character sometimes or do you still have, you know, some residue of that character still lingering until maybe some time later on where you finally shed it? How does that work? Because I've always been curious how actors are able to switch from I'm in character to I'm not. Because I can, I can imagine some psychological challenges if you're doing a major role, right? Like, yes. The smaller roles, it's a lot easier to get get out of the character mm -hmm. because you know, you know, next week you're not having to play that character anymore. Right. And so you can quickly drop that character. But but if you're, say, playing the lead in a film and you're, you're in there for months and months and months doing this character, I find for me, I tend to stay in that character and I do method. I think method works the best just because you're authentically in the character and you don't break character, even when you're not on screen. Um, okay. I know there's a lot of other actors that do this, 
Uh, I know Mike Myers does that. Uh, he he stays in character the whole time. I've heard from people that he can get pretty annoying after a while because he's really funny. But after a while, you're just like, dude, can we be serious for right, five minutes? Right. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, I mean, I t- I tend to go towards that staying in the character just because it's more authentic that way. Right. But depending right. on what character it is, I mean, if you're playing like a serial killer, well, you probably shouldn't stay in that character all the time. You know what I mean? It's probably right. going to scare people, right. you know, right. but, <laughs> but, but I think for me, it, it does, it does work better for a major role to stay in that character for as long as possible, or at least keep the characteristics of that person in their sort of normal way, like of living. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 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 Can you can you share anything, any tips or advice for anyone who is trying to navigate this balancing act of multiple careers, right? So, mm-hmm. or, or multiple things that they're into. How do you balance that between mm-hmm. you being a mother and and your careers and you know all these things? Like, how do you how do you manage? It can be tough sometimes. Um, sometimes. For instance, you want to do a podcast and your daughter comes out. She's like, <laughs> okay, I, I love her to death. She's the best. No, but, but you, you kind of have to try to make it work somehow, you know, um, just, just you do what you got to do to make it happen. Uh, sometimes that's more difficult than easy. Yeah. Um, but at the end of the day, I think making yourself happy as a parent is really important. Yes. yes. Um, and so I always say, do the things that is, are passionate that you're passionate about in life mm-hmm. and let your children see you be happy and passionate because then you're giving them this gift as them seeing you in your best possible way. And so I always try to make time to fill that part of myself nice. so that when I come back, I have something really happy to share. Yes. yes. Um, and so I always remind myself that maybe it's a little bit harder because I'm juggling more things, but at the end of the day, I really am fulfilling myself more because I'm making myself happy. Um, Yeah. And I think nowadays we kind of have to have more than one career. Yeah. Really. It's hard to have just one. I mean, it's not the cut, the type of society that we used to just have one career for the the rest of our lives. Yeah. It's a different. Now it's like you have to have three or four different ones. You have to change. You have to go with the flow. Um, So I think, that's a big part of it too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Projects. What projects do you have mm-hmm. in the pipeline and perf- or performances? <laughs> what do you have lined up? Yeah. Um, well, I've just actually been in the studio recently and I am working on the title track of my album, which is going to be coming out, which mm-hmm. is called Love Frequency 528. Whoa. Yeah. What's 528? <laughs> I love that you're asking that. I love it. I love it. Okay, well, I studied this a while back. There's a frequency in music called 528. And when you hear the tone 528, it actually has healing powers. Um, it's wow. supposed to emit healing and love and happiness and positivity. Wow. Um, and this whole album that I'm working on is about energy and about uh, healing and all of those things. And so I thought, what better way to, to talk about that than to do the album around that topic? Wow. And what I also found out is that a lot of bands use that frequency, like the Beatles, the Rolling Stones, a lot of really famous artists use this frequency and it's actually very healing. And a lot of people appeal to that frequency. You and just, so I thought that would be really cool too. You just gave me a whole new appreciation for your single just because of that. <laughs> Honestly, because I initially I just looked at it as that, right? Fresh start. But now that you shared that, the frequency detail, it, it changes everything. And it gives me a totally different, more, you know, substantial meaning. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. now I can see where it's connected to, where it's coming from, right? So thank you for that. That's awesome. Yeah, no Five problem. Five two eight. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And so the track that I'm doing is a very positive, uplifting, happy track. Mm-hmm. And what I love about it is that I actually have that frequency in the song. Nice. So the frequency of five two eight is in the song frequency five two eight. Wow. Um. So 
I'm just really excited about it and it's going to be a fun track and I can't really say much more, but that's what the whole album is going to be about is like healing and energy and love and just spirituality and just all of it all in all in the album. Wow. So, okay. Mm-hmm. That's perfect. Now I want to know about the single. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Talk to me about that. How did that come about? Um, what does the title actually mean to you? Right. We'll start there and then I'll ask my other question after. Okay, are we talking about the one that I released already? Yeah, or Fresh Start, Fresh yes. Start? yes. Start there. Okay, so Fresh Start is actually a very personal song that I wrote. Um, I came out of a very toxic relationship and I used a lot of that experience to write the song. Um, not only was it just that relationship that, that did that for me, um, basically it's talking about being able to change your mind at any time in your life. Like if at 50 years old, you decide, you know what? I don't like what I'm doing. I'm going to take another path. I'm going to be a photographer, whatever it is. There's like no expiry date for that. There's no limit age limit for that. You can change your mind at any time. Who says you can't, you can. Um, And so I was basically saying, embracing myself and going, I'm embracing my fresh start. Like I kind of put aside my music for a bit, you know, after all these bad things happened in the industry for me. And I kind of put it aside and I I kind of turned my back on it a little bit. And then this is my way of kind of saying, you know what? I can start again and I can pick it right back up. That's it. That's it. And I can change my mind, you know? Wow. Um, so that's kind of where that came in. And then, of course, Jacques Claire, well, he's a great friend of mine. And we had done a lot of uh, recording together before. None of it ended up getting released. I, I don't know why. But yeah. uh, but this one really stuck. And I thought he would be perfect for this. And I just thought, and also, too, Jacques Claire, he, you know, was very famous in the late 90s. Yeah. And then now he's still push. He's still pushing it now, yeah. too. He's coming back again. Yeah. And it's like a fresh start for him, too. So I'm like, this is a perfect combination yeah. of pushing that, you know? And he does a lot of uh, nonprofit stuff, too. Uh, I'm seeing more and more of uh, things that he's doing around community and things like that. So that's, it's nice. Was it, was, yeah. it, was it an easy ask for you to get him on board? I mean, I'm sure his schedule is pretty busy as well because he's, he's not, you know, somebody that's just sitting at home. He's busy. He's recording. He's helping others and, and so forth. So how was that? for you to reach out and say, Hey, I want you on this song. And how yeah. to, what was his response to the song when you first heard well, it? I, I was lucky because we had known each other for quite a few years. Nice. Um, before, before the pandemic, I knew him for a few years before that and we had met up and said, Hey, we should do something together. And like we did coffee and we talked and then we had done another project with somebody else and it didn't end up working out. It was just a bad scene. Um, there was another girl on the song and she like cut me from the song and it was just like, it was just really a, not a good scene, Yeah. but we kept in touch after that. Nice. And then I had the song and we always talked about, we're going to work together again, you know, even though this project didn't work out, whatever. Yeah. And then COVID hit and I had this record label now and I had this track and I'm going, he would be perfect for this. I could just hear him in it. So I just ran it by him and said, hey, would you be interested in getting on this track? Because, like, you know, we haven't done anything in a while. Yeah. And he listened to it, and he was like, for sure. Like, he totally dug it. That was it. And we he ended up doing the vocals. I mean, we weren't even in the same room when we recorded it. Because wow. it was during COVID. We couldn't yeah. be together yeah. in the same room. Yeah. So I had sent him my stuff, and I was like, hey, let me know if you, you can do something on this. So I sent it to him, and he sent it back to me. And I was just like golden like i was just like yes perfect (laughs) and uh and then it just went went from there and and we did a music video for it and shout out to shocks by the way he is a great guy he he is you know interested in a lot of different things happening in the city made to move mountains outreach he's doing that nice and he helped me out too you know and he's a good guy so i really appreciate him and shout out to him for that nice nice big shout out yeah 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 (laughs) <laughs> now, now, talk to me about the music video. Yes. What was that experience like, going through and creating it? Did you come up with the idea, the scenes, and everything else, or did you have a team around you helping you with that? Well, I did have a team. Um, 
producing the whole thing and, and making that come to light. Really what ended up happening was the director came up with most of the ideas of what was happening, but he, we sat down for quite a few hours over right. zoom and, and he asked me, okay, what do you mean in this song when you sing this? Uh, like, what was your feeling? What were you, what were you saying here? Mm -hmm. And he really tried to emulate that mm -hmm. in a very visual way yeah. about what I was trying to say in the song. Um, and so we were in the studio for two days doing that and we weren't going to go out of the studio. So everything we had to do was in the studio. Oh, that and was so, shot in the studio. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We did it for two days. Wow. Yeah. yeah. We shot it for two days in the studio. Um, and so when you're not able to leave the studio, you have to come up with different ideas yeah. to do, yeah. right? Cause yeah. you're only, you have this room that you've got to use and, yeah. and you're going to make it happen. And he really, really took what I was saying and he made it happen visually. I was so impressed. Wow. Um, and, it, and it ended up working out really, really well. Yeah, it, it, it turned out really well. I enjoyed it. I watched it when, when you told me about it. It was like, okay, I got to check it out right now. So that was a nice Definitely. video. Good job. Yeah. Oh, man. It came, to, it came together really nice. I was very, very happy. Now, very happy. now I'm, I'm hoping that this conversation allows more people to go and check it out because that's what I want them to do. <clears throat> Ah, but absolutely. So tune in, check it out, listen to the song. Um, it's funny. I had I had uh, my daughter listen to it. She's like, "Who is that?" I'm like, "It's Alexia's uh, mom." She's like, "No way!" Right? So she, she runs <laughs> right away, shares with with her mom, and 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 just started singing it. Like, so she heard it a few times, and she's singing along. I'm like, "Huh? Look at that! It's simple enough that they can follow it." And and she liked it, and obviously because there's a connection for her too, right? Uh -huh. Yeah, I love that. But I think. What can the new listeners or fans expect when they listen to this single? Mm -hmm. um, well, I think it's it's a type of song that you you can bop to, like you you can really feel and get yeah. down to. Yeah. But also when you when you hear what the message is behind the song, mm -hmm. you can also use it to reflect on your life and use it as a way to empower yourself yeah. to feel confident about about being yourself and about doing what you want to do in life and changing your path if you need to <clears throat> and not feeling like you're you have to do something by a certain time right you know right yeah the expiration yeah. date thing there's no expiration mm -hmm. date mm -hmm. yeah your your logo we got to talk mm -hmm. about that yeah 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 what's the well, story it, it is nice i really enjoy it like i so it's funny because when you told me to go and check it out, I went on Spotify and I looked at mm -hmm. um, your your image and I looked at it and mm -hmm. I saw the name. I didn't yeah. pay attention to it. Right. I, di I didn't until you said, oh, take a look at my logo. And I was like, wait, I went back. I looked at him like, oh, is that yeah. connected to the five, five, um, eight, two or two, eight? Did I reverse the numbers? Um, it is in a way. Okay. What, what it basically is, is the. The logo will be forever my logo and it's it's the it's a labyrinth is what it is actually uh, um and so what it is is it's basically a journey of enlightenment is what a labyrinth is so you go like through to all these like turns and twists and parallels mm -hmm. and things in life to to come to a place where you're enlightened and i feel like that is what the album is about what i'm about what I'm trying to do with my music is going through all these different experiences and finding the silver lining, um, giving power and energy to everybody else that's listening to it. Right. And so that, that for me symbolizes what I'm doing as an artist. Right. Um, and I'm also trying to bring light to things because I think there's a lot of artists out there who aren't necessarily trying to bring across happiness mm -hmm. or bring across healing yeah. or positivity. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's something that we really need right now, especially after COVID um, becoming enlightened and just healing, yeah. focusing on healing. Yeah. 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 So that's, that's what that's about. Yeah. Now, now the color blue, is that, mm -hmm. was that significant? Is that um, strategic? Was it on purpose? Is there a reason behind that color choice? Oh, you mean for the actual? Yeah, for the artwork, for the cover. Of oh, the for singer. the artwork. Yeah. yeah, it's it's like a it's like a darkish purple kind yeah. of color. Yeah. 
for that, no, there, there wasn't really anything behind the color. I'll probably end up using it in different colors. Okay, okay. Uh, okay. Like on merch or on my next album. But that's definitely going to be part of my logo forever because I really feel like that is what I'm about and what I'm representing. Nice. Um, and every single song on this album that I'm doing on Love Frequency 528 is about energy of some kind. Nice. Like there's one song, I don't know if you've read the book The Secret, but it's about energy. Yes. Have you read The Secret? I have it. So there's one song that it's called secret, but it, mm. it, it's similar. It has, it has essences of that nice. behind it. Nice. So every single song has something to do with becoming enlightened and empowered with energy. Nice. How, how yeah. long ago, by the way, did you read that book? You know what? I read that book uh, in my early twenties actually. And I try to read it every few years. Yeah. Same here. I try to go back to it every couple of years and it's, it's nice. It's one of those books you can't just shelf. You have to use it and it reminds you to just be practical about, you know, the things that you're yeah, doing. Yeah. 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 And I really find that it works. Yeah, it does. It does. It does. It's a mindset thing. It's yep. um, amazing what being positive can do for yep. your life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Now, can you share any tips or advice for women or mothers who are also pursuing the entertainment industry, whether it be music or acting? Yes. First of all, I would say, don't let anybody say you're too old. Honey, girls, you look good in every age. Do not buy into that because it's not true. There's so many people that have defied that. Um, and I would just say those people that say that you're too old, well, they're probably just mad because they never made it themselves. That's it. That's it. Do, you know, don't don't buy into the dogma of it all. Yeah. Um, that's the first thing I would say. Second thing is mothers have so much knowledge. Like to be able to even be able to make music in the music industry, I think being a mother and having that under your belt gives you so much more things to discuss and so many, so much more magic to, to, to work with. Um, and it's so inspiring. And I just think if you've never been an artist and you're a mother and you feel like you want to be an artist now, I say, go for it. You have so much power nice. that you gave birth to this child, you know, or children, you, yeah. you, you have so much going for you. Use that, use all of that experience to share it with the world. Um, it can be hard to balance things as a mother, yeah. because we are expected to do a lot of things in society. And that's just sort of how it is. Mm -hmm. But always remember to make time for yourself and carve out time for yourself. That's, it. that's so important. Thank you. Oh my gosh, yeah. that's awesome. So yeah. we are pretty much on our final leg, but mm -hmm. I have a small segment that I call, Would You Rather? Ooh, would you rather? <laughs> this is silly, okay? It's, it's <laughs> I random. It. <laughs> I give you two options. You got to pick one, and you got to live with it, all right? Okay. Um, would you rather drink all your food from a baby's bottle or wear visible diapers for the rest of your life? <laughs> Uh, I'd say drink from the bottle. Drink from the bottle. Yeah. That's going to be tough. Down to. <laughs> you can put anything yeah. in that thing. Just blend it up. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Oh, the diaper thing. I just can't do it. I just can't. Maybe it's because I, I changed so many diapers in my, in my day now that I'm just like, no. <laughs> oh, Definitely drink out of the bottle. For, right? For sure. That's it. That's it. <laughs> Love it, love it, love it, love Thank it. Thank you for that. Thank you for yeah, that. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> so <laughs> I usually throw that in there just to kind of lighten it up a bit if things were, know. you know, a little tense. Yeah. But thank yeah. you for yeah. that. That's awesome. Next time I see you in the schoolyard, I'm going to have that baby ball. I'm like, listen, you started this. <laughs> Can you imagine? Right? <laughs> like, um, okay. <laughs> uh, no, that'll be good. That'll be good. Yeah, that's so, awesome. If you can improve two areas in your life, what would they be? I would say getting tighter on my schedule mm -hmm. because I want to do a lot of things and I don't know how to fit it all in. Got and it. I try, but sometimes it's like, it's crazy. Yeah. 
So I got to really get better at that. I'm trying to do that this year, mm -hmm. um, but I need to take it up a couple notches. That's for sure. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. And what would the second um, one be? Hmm. Second one. Second one is just always getting better at my craft. Just always getting better. Um, I, I need to, I need to start getting much better. I, I just want to get better, I guess, yeah. at everything, but at my craft. Yes, That's definitely. It. Definitely. Yeah. So in a few words, mm -hmm. how would you describe what your family means to you? My family. Oh my goodness. Um, my family is the most important thing to me. Nice. Um, especially my daughter, because, you know, it's, it's, it's me and my daughter. Mm -hmm. um, and I just, for some reason, there's just so much love there. And it's that unconditional love yeah. that you know you're always going to have yeah. Yeah. that I didn't even realize I needed, mm -hmm. but I do. There's just something so beautiful about it. Um, just knowing that you can uh, do things in your life and explore and go through different things. And that person is always going to be there for you, is always going to be there for you to love and them to love you. Um, it's just a beautiful, magical thing. Nice. And there's wait, nothing like it, really. It's tr you're absolutely right. You're absolutely mm -hmm. right. It's it's one of those things you never thought was possible until you're in it. You know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that 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 feeling of this person is always going to be there, and how much they mean to you, and you can't even put words to it. It's just a feeling. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. So yeah. I, I and also, they make me feel like I can do anything. Like I'm unstoppable. Right. 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 I make a joke sometimes about this. I get, I have this like Hulk syndrome. Yeah. Yeah. I think I can do anything. <laughs> like sometimes that. it gets me in trouble though. <laughs> I try to move like big things of furniture and stuff. And then I'm like, oh, I, I really should not have done that. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then I like can't move my shoulders. For, like, a week. <laughs> but like, but, but I feel like that is what gives me that feeling. It's yeah. like, I to do yeah. everything for these people yeah. i feel like i could do anything for yeah. these people you know what i mean it's <laughs> so much love there um, so <laughs> that's awesome that's awesome yeah <laughs> where True, though where do you see yourself in five years from now in five years yeah i see myself i see myself at Cannes film festival nice i see myself at the grammys Nice. I love it. I love and I it. see myself with an amazing daughter. So this one that... here joined me too. You can see Oh, her. hi. <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> Alexia was just down here a few minutes ago. <laughs> yeah, Alexia was just in her screen. <laughs> yeah. When we finish, um, I'll talk to you, okay? I see my daughter being an amazing, beautiful human being in five years too. Yeah. And I think that is going to be the most rewarding thing. Nice. I, I'm saying I see myself at Cannes and I see myself in the Grace because that's where I, I really feel like I will go. Yeah. Um, and that's my goal. But and but my daughter being an amazing human being is going to be the most fulfilling part of it all. Nice. nice. Yeah. Yeah. Now, for those listening to the show, how can they support you, your song, anything that you are connected to? How can they reach you? How can they follow, support? Can you share some of that with, with them as far as your social media handles or anything else or anywhere they can get your music and so forth? Absolutely. Well, you can check out my music on Spotify. I have that single with Chaclair out. It's called Fresh Start featuring Chaclair. You can find my music on there. I have other singles on Spotify as well. You can follow me on my Instagram at Music 111 Reach out to me anytime. I'm really cool. I'll answer any messages you have, questions, anything like that. I love to talk to people. Nice. Um, you can also follow me on my website at shaunamusic.com. And also my Facebook page. You could uh, click a like on my Facebook page. Follow me on there at Shauna Songs. Nice. Um, and check out my music and merch that I'll be, I'll be selling down the line. Shows that I have that will be coming up. You can find on my website. And I would just love for all of you to follow me and uh, check out my material. It'll be very helpful to me. And 
you know, send a comment here, a positive comment there. It always helps. Nice. And I like to hear feedback on what anyone's thinking about what I'm doing. Any feedback at all. I really appreciate and love. Nice. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And I'll make sure all that information is going to be in the description of the episode as well. Perfect. Perfect. So you guys got it from her directly. Make sure you go on there and support, like, comment, obviously positive comments and share the <laughs> <laughs> right we're all right. about positivity i don't like the negative we are. stuff we right? are. We are. make sure you reshare it with somebody else you know keep spreading it and that's what we do about about um you know things that we want to support so continue to support um now before i let you go hmm. could you share one important lesson that you've learned recently mm-hmm. uh, one important lesson that I've learned recently. Yeah, like a life lesson that I would say this. I would say don't take any moment for granted. Don't. We take for granted the people that are around us the most, that love us the most. And sometimes we don't give them as much attention as we give strangers. Always remember that. Always tell people how you feel. Show up for the people that you love. Don't make excuses because you really don't know how long that person is going to be around. I know this because I just lost my mother and I love her. She's the sweetest and most amazing person. Um, And she taught me that too, is that when you love, when you care about people, you show up for them and you tell them as much as possible how much you love them, how much you care about them. Don't forget to do that daily. We forget sometimes, especially with people we're around all the time. Take time each day and just be grateful and tell people you love them. That's so important. Man, Shauna, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much. It was awesome. It was I know. awesome. <laughs> You're awesome. I, you and I got along very well at the very beginning. It's, right? it's meant to be that we had this talk. That's Hi, it. buddy. <laughs> <laughs> so, folks, until next episode, I want to thank you. Continue to support the show. Like, comment, subscribe, share. Until next episode, love, peace, and happiness.